The world is full of conspiracy theories, and even more so now with the addition of the internet. While most theories can lead to misinformation, there are some that can be quite entertaining and certainly strange. Number 10. The Shadow Government is a rather well-known conspiracy theory that branches off in many directions. It's also referred to as secret government, invisible government, or cryptocracy. The theory itself is based on the notion that real political power resides with both the publicly elected individual as well as the private behind-the-scenes individuals. It's said that these secret people are controlling the world and exercising their power out of the public eye and beyond the scrutiny of democratic institutions. It's according to this theory and its followers that the elected government is subservient to the shadow government, which is in true power and has actual control over the world. Groups that are proposed as constituting the shadow government are a variety. It starts with the central banks, also referred to as the Federal Reserve, which use monetary policy to manage fluctuations in the economy, as well as achieve price stability. The Federal Reserve is incredibly powerful, as are those who run the world's largest banks. The Fed implements policies that directly affect the bankers, so it makes sense that many would be concerned about what this institution does, who runs it, and how it's structured. Just like any other elite group, these people meet in private or secret in order to come to a conclusion on how best to get what they desire. Branching from this theory brings in the Rothschilds. The Rothschild family is one of the richest and oldest families in history who have roots in banking. It's theorized that they're behind the Federal Reserve and they control the global financial system. The family, according to the conspiracy, is the shadow government of the Fed. Unsurprisingly, the secret societies also come into play here. This includes the New World Order, as well as the Freemasons, who theorists believe are controlling not just in the financial world, but also the events that happen within it. The theory posits that the elites are working to orchestrate global events to enslave the human population. It's believed that the global leaders are complicit in the establishment of NWO by manufacturing catastrophic global events, as well as controlling the narratives to bring about civil unrest. The deeper you go, the stranger it gets, because it's not just the elites, the central banks, or the Rothschilds that are being blamed for shadow governing, but also a more invisible force, aliens. A notion stating that extraterrestrials control the world or make puppets out of the ruling class is another well-known branch of this family of theories. Quote, the world is controlled by an elite group of reptiles, says the conspiracy. The basis of such a conspiracy is that during the ancient times, advanced reptiles had come to Earth from Alpha Draconis, a star system, and thereafter began to infiltrate the government of these civilizations to control the humans and become our rulers. It's widely believed that we're living among these shape-shifting aliens, and there are many books and internet videos in support of such a strange conspiracy theory. Literary works on the subject include The Invisible Government by Dan Smoot, Guide to Global Conspiracy by David Icke, Population Control by Jim Mars, and many, many more. Number 9. False history refers to the family of conspiracy theories relating to the notion that historical events are the subjects of fabrication. Theorists believe that these events have been deliberately distorted. Among those theories are the phantom time hypothesis, the comparable theory known as new chronology, and the strange claim of free energy and giants from Tartary. The phantom time hypothesis refers to a conspiracy that we're actually still in the 1700s and that a chunk of the calendar had been entirely made up by three historical figures. New chronology also proves to be an incredibly strange theory, and has been marked as the craziest one. The theory is associated with Anatoly Fomenko, who maintains that history is centuries less than what is believed. This conspiracy states that nothing that happened before 800 AD was real. Fomenko, a mathematician, along with new chronology, had challenged the traditional order of events as so taught in schools. The man's theory expanded and was published in the early 1980s. In a 1997 piece, the theorist had said, quote, the purpose of the scientific project, which we will shortly call new chronology, is the creation of a reliable independent method of dating of the ancient and medieval events. It's a difficult scientific problem the solution of which required the use of thin methods of modern mathematics and cast computer calculations. 
16th and 17th century academics, in creating a chronology history, are said to have misinterpreted the date of such past events, either in an accidental or malicious manner which needs correction. But Fomenko's theory is more complex than that. He believed that instead of it not happening at all, these events did occur but at a different time. He suggested that these events happened but we misunderstood their context and their occasion. Ancient Rome existed, but in the medieval period, the crucifixion took place in Constantinople in the 12th century. Of course, this conspiracy has no basis and has been disproved by the existence of scientific methods of testing age. What's even more odd about Flamenco's conspiracy is not just how strange it is, but also the amount of support that it has. His book has sold over a million copies. Along with these allegations comes the falsification of historical documents, which was done by the government, the CIA, or other elite groups according to the conspiracy. In addition, the governments of the world have also hidden historical evidence of the advanced civilization with access to free energy and a population of giants in a place called Tartaria. It was said to have been conveniently destroyed in the 1800s by a mud flood event. Tartary or Tartaria refers to the historical name of Central Asia. Pseudo-historical conspiracy theories surround the area with ideas of a hidden past and an advanced civilization. In 1908, the Singer Building in Manhattan was completed by Ernest Flagg. Unfortunately, the tower lacked office space and so it was later peacefully demolished. But this building was seen as an artifact left over from the globe-spanning civilization known as the Tartarian Empire. Theorists suggest that the existence of this empire was erased from all history books. Followers of this conspiracy suggest that the buildings are evidence of the hidden past that has been clandestinely obscured by actors. Many have come to suggest that the leading governments of the world have destroyed real documents and obscured our past for reasons unknown to us. Evidence for such a notion, though, is not plentiful. But it has been suggested that we're not in 2023, but 1726. There also appeared to be several branches leading from the base of a false history, which includes the well-known Mandela Effect. Number 8. Over 35 years in the NASCAR Cup Series, Richard Petty, the king, had accumulated 200 victories, almost double the amount of the second place David Pearson. He had 712 top 10 finishes, 123 poles, 7 wins at the Daytona 500, and 7 Cup Series titles. It was in 1984 that Richard had established his 200th victory on Independence Day at the Firecracker 400 at Daytona International Speedway. After this win, conspiracy theories were on the rise that the whole race was staged after the rival driver had retired to the pits prematurely. It was alleged that the race was sabotaged or fixed as it had been attended by then-President Ronald Reagan. NASCAR didn't usually hold races on a Wednesday, but an exception was made for Independence Day. The President had also been the one to give the Start Your Engines command from Air Force One on his way to the event to watch the ending of the race. When Reagan had arrived there, he would become the first President to attend such a race. He was initially stopped by the press before heading to his suite, where he watched as Richard had taken off with the other 41 drivers. The driver never hid the fact that he preferred the right side of politics and had attended at various events in North Carolina in support of the president during the re-election campaign, which of course ties in with this conspiracy. Because Reagan was the first president to attend a NASCAR race, the 1984 Firecracker 400 would be getting a whole lot of attention. It was due to this that the conspiracy theory began. NASCAR needed a big-name driver to win this race, which was Richard Petty. It was two laps away from the final one when one of the drivers had crashed, which established a caution flag. It was stated that Cale Yarborough had actually beaten Richard and was told to head down pit road a lap early. This would ensure that the famous driver would win his 200th race with Reagan in attendance. This was in the electronic scoring days, so it may be plausible that NASCAR wanted to make sure that Richard was the one to win, and that this was the only way they could do so. Before he headed to Victory Lane, which was standard tradition, the winner immediately got out of his car and joined Reagan in his suite, where they would have lunch together, which also supports the conspiracy that the race was fixed. Furthermore, the racer never won another race after this one. The entire event just seemed a little too convenient for some NASCAR fans. 
A couple of hours after the race, around 2,000 guests were invited to and attended a picnic where food was served and the country music star, Tammy Wynette, had sung Stand By Your Man to Reagan. Richard then allegedly gave the president a Reagan Bush jacket. Four months later, Reagan won the re-election over Walter Mondale. Theorists maintained that the race was the perfect scenario. It proved a big advantage for NASCAR if a big-name driver had outdueled another. There were two laps to go as the racers took the yellow caution flag, and this meant that no driver would be able to improve their position in the last five miles of the 400-mile race. It was the caution flag, paired with the premature pit entry, that had given rise to the conspiracy theory. Was it just a mental error that caused Yarborough to enter the pit too early? Or were the theorists right in their presumption that he was called into the pits? Perhaps every aspect of this race was fixed, from the crash to the caution flag, the nose-to-nose -nose battle, and the premature retirement, along with the attendance of the president. It did seem a little too convenient after all. Number 7. All of the sudden, in the last year, there have been a number of videos doing the rounds on social media platforms of various animal species walking aimlessly in circles. This mysterious act has caused conspiracy theorists to believe that the world is soon coming to an end. Many outlets have stated that this is not the case and that there's no reason for concern. One media outlet had shared a video where sheep had been moving around in circles, which was said to have lasted 10 days on a farm. After this initial video, more began to pop up, including videos of fish, reindeer, and ants all moving in a circle together. In some of the videos, theorists alleged that they were proof of various conspiracies, including that of 5G, a harp plot, or a sign of impending doom. But this animal behavior is said to have some explanation. Similar videos began to circulate on TikTok, Facebook, and Twitter, which also included turtles and caterpillars. Each post had put forth a different theory to explain why this was happening. One video that was posted on Twitter had shown an iPhone placed on the ground as small insects circled around it. It was shared over 1,700 times on Twitter and was said to be caused by 5G waves. Another TikTok video showed reindeer, bees, birds, and sheep all doing the same thing. This one received over 900,000 views. In this case, the high-frequency active auroral research program, also known as HARP, was blamed. This American-based research program studies the upper atmosphere, yet some theorists believe that they're in control of the weather. CERN, or the Center for Nuclear Research, also had allegations placed against them, after theorists stated that they'd open portals and black holes resulting in this strange animal behavior. Others have even come to claim that this is the result of pole reversal. As far as the farmers who owned the sheep, they were perfectly healthy, and the same is assumed about the rest of the animals who were doing the same thing. The circulation of this strange animal behavior has not only given rise to conspiracies, but also to concern among scientists and animal experts. One plausible explanation, aside from the end of the world and black holes, is that these animals are exhibiting mass hysteria, also known as mass psychogenic illness. It refers to a phenomenon that occurs in both people or animals when the group is experiencing similar emotional or even physical symptoms from a shared belief or fear. This can be caused by social isolation, stress, or even the presence of a threat or what appears to be a threat. In the case of the circling behavior, it suggested that they're reacting to a stressor present in the environment. Examples include that the reindeer or even horses are reacting to a predator or the introduction of a different group of animals. The ants, who reacted to the iPhone, may be doing that as their habitat has been changed, or they think the device is a food item. Orcas may exhibit the same behavior if their social structure changes, or if there's a predator nearby. But this explanation has not convinced most theorists, who maintain that these actions are a sign of a coming apocalypse. Number 6. Australia is the only country in the world that covers an entire continent. But it doesn't exist. At least according to Bing and conspiracy theorists. This long-running internet conspiracy theory denies the existence of the country and has birthed many Facebook pages dedicated to the idea. Many real Australian users have reportedly searched Does Australia Exist on the Bing search engine, only to find that their country isn't real. Bing responds with a simple no written in the text box before showing further results. But results appeared to vary. 
some went on to Bing to search for the same thing, and the results contradicted the first. There are still some theorists who maintain that the country was invented by the British government. They say that they used it as an excuse to punish thousands of prisoners. But scientific evidence has already debunked such an idea. One Facebook user had explained that Australia wasn't real, and it was an entire hoax. She alleged that we were made to believe that Britain had moved their criminals to another place, when the actual fact was that they'd been loaded onto ships and into the waters. She furthers this outlandish hypothesis by stating that all the proof that one may come across are all fabricated documents and lies that were made by the leading world governments. Australian citizens are all actors or even computer-generated personas that are all part of the plan to trick the world. The user had written, quote, If you think you've been to Australia, you're terribly wrong. The plane pilots are all in on this and have all in actuality only flown you to islands close by. It was also according to her that there was a cleared space in South America that's said to look like the country and all the citizens are actors. The user then proceeded to encourage anyone who'd seen the post to join the movement and to make it known that we've all been deceived. What makes this worse is that 22,000 people have shared the theory all over Facebook. But it's been suggested that the woman had started this rant as a joke and didn't actually believe in the theory. But a whole lot of other users did. A group on the social media platform is also dedicated to the conspiracy. The Australia is an elaborate hoax group. It tends to be more meme-based though. But there are some genuine believers who partake in it. A counter group was made, most likely by an Australian citizen, called The World Outside of Australia is an Elaborate Hoax, sparking a new theory. While some had been against the initial post about the country, some Australians actually played along. They asked for money to share their story of being an individual residing in a fake country. Of course, the Flat Earthers joined in as well. They stated that the ships that carried the convicts of Britain had sailed off the edge of the Earth and had to somehow cover up this disastrous mistake. Number 5. BuzzFeed has recently released an article after Accomplished Leg 991 had asked social media users to share the wildest conspiracies they'd ever heard. There are various conspiracy theories that circulate around Big Pharma, which is the term used for the largest publicly traded pharmaceutical companies. Many believe that they're responsible for creating diseases, from which they may profit from through the medications that the majority would need. Some also theorize that they're hiding the cure for cancer, so they can continue to profit off of the disease. A user named Still Bald shared his story of when a truck driver had delivered some items to him and told him that the push for green lawns in the United States is being carried out by Big Pharma. It was furthered that for one to keep the grass so green, they would need pesticides. Pesticides are a known carcinogen, and if people do awaken these cancer cells, they would need treatment. The pharmaceutical companies would profit from this as the consumers would need to purchase various medications to aid them during the disease. Studies have revealed that pesticides, especially those that contain arsenic, have an increased cancer risk, which is a concern for agricultural workers. But the average person is not exposed enough to pesticides to have any sort of real impact on them. One should limit the use of chemicals and should also handle the chemicals with gloves and wear a suitable mask. These chemicals often come with warnings about cancer as well as how to handle it correctly. Those dealing with these harmful pesticides should take the necessary steps to prevent overexposure. Mr. Chef 771 had replied to Still Bald's theory, stating that this was just a case of just because someone is benefiting indirectly from something doesn't mean they're behind it, which is certainly true. Pesticides, as discussed, come with warnings, and the responsibility to heed those warnings lies with the user. Another Reddit user brought about a new theory that tied into the main one. He stated that grass allergens would also cause people to need antihistamines. One commenter explained that they don't believe that anyone pushed for lawns or other cancer-causing aspects, but do believe that the corporations would profit from something like that, even if they're not directly behind it. Number 4. According to a TikTok-born conspiracy theory, panda bears are not real. The strange behavior of these bamboo-eating bears makes for a compelling theory. The conspiracy suggests that they're just people dressed up in suits, which has gained traction on TikTok. This theory connects to the recent notion that a sun bear in a zoo had actually been one of the zookeepers in a suit. Guests who went to the Hongzhou Zoo had caught sight of a sun bear that was acting rather strangely when prompting the accusation that the zookeepers had been pulling a fast one with the visitors. 
A video circulated online that revealed the bear, named Angela, standing on two legs in her habitat. The video would soon find itself on a popular social media platform before heading out to the rest of the web. More theories began to sprout, as some suggested that the bear was replaced by a person or a dog in an ill-fitting suit. Angela had been standing erect as though she was built to stand like a human being. It was even said that if you squint, you may see the outline of the zookeeper inside. But this is not the case, and it turned out that sun bears are just strange. It was due to this video that also gave rise to the pandas aren't real conspiracy theory. This allegation had popped up on the Bravo original series Southern Charm. While on a trip to Linville, North Carolina, Craig Conover had asked the question, are pandas real? The other men had looked at him with skepticism before laughing. But Conover was rather serious, saying, quote, I really wanted them to be real. In a conversation between Shep Rose and the producers, Rose had alleged that Craig was crazy. When one of his friends, Rodrigo Reyes, had asked him why he believed such a theory, Craig simply stated that there was just no evidence for it. Later, when speaking to producers, the theorists stated that pandas are not real and that they're mere zookeepers or paid actors in suits. The only evidence that such theorists have on this conspiracy is that the bears are persistently clumsy. They're also ostensibly carnivores, yet they live on bamboo and are well known to be terrible with reproduction. If this conspiracy were true, then it is a rather elaborate one. This would mean that the roughly 650 pandas in the zoos or other facilities would each have to have a person inside. Keeping that many suits filled up around the clock would prove to be a trying task. Thousands of individuals would have to work together in shifts to keep up the big lie, and that's not accounting for the designing, creation, and maintenance of the suits themselves. Added to the design would have to be a storage area for the bamboo, as the visitors would need to see that the pandas are eating in order to sell off such a theory. Zoo staff, documentary crews, scientists, and biologists would all have to be in on the ruse, or otherwise fooled into believing that these suit actors are real panda bears. Additionally, there are estimated to be over 1,000 pandas in the wild. This would mean that people dressed up in panda suits would have to be dumped somewhere in the bamboo forests, which would certainly bring a new meaning to the term remote work. Number 3. Tying in with the false history conspiracy, the phantom time hypothesis, and the new chronology conspiracy, is the idea that the Dark Ages never happened and it was all fabricated. In 1991, the phantom time hypothesis was presented by historian Herbert Illig and his colleagues. They'd claimed that some gaps in the records confirmed their hypothesis. The team stated that the suspect was the Holy Roman Emperor Otto III. He's thought to have lived around 1000, but Herbert says otherwise. The group of theorists believed that the emperor was alive in 700, but had wished that he lived at the time of the first millennium. And so, with the assistance of Pope Sylvester II, he managed to add 300 years to the date. In order to cover up this big lie, the emperor would make up a convincing story of an 8th century Frankish emperor who was named Charlemagne. The Dark Ages is a period of time that lies between the fall of the Roman Empire and the start of the Italian Renaissance and the Age of Discovery. The period happened somewhere from 500 to 1500 AD, but these are just approximations. Herbert was not the only theorist to postulate this strange conspiracy. A paper argued that the years 614 AD to 911 AD had been inserted into history by incorrect dating or even by deliberate forgery and falsifications. The Middle Ages, though, are littered with historical significance. Followers of this conspiracy theory maintain that these events have been made up and placed within our historical records. Is it possible in this case to pick out certain elements of accuracy that regard this period of time, which specifically refers to dating and forgery? Analysts had often written their accounts years after it had taken place, and not all of the writings agree on the date as to when that specific event had occurred, which leaves it to historians to figure out exactly when these events took place by analyzing such sources. It was also found that several charters dating from this era were subject to forgery, some of them have been based upon older documentation which had become lost, and others were made up to protect the rights of churches, monasteries, or even individuals. It's conspiracy theories such as these that serve as a reminder as to the problems that historians face on a daily basis and the need to approach any of these sources and reading material with caution. Nemet's paper had started off with the question, 
did the early Middle Ages really exist? In his first paragraph, he answers the question with a simple no. His thesis spanned over 11 pages. He argues against the dating techniques that are used, which include dendrochronology, the dating of wood. Niemitz explains that the number of suitable wood samples that connect to the Middle Ages is rather small. For 380 AD, there are only three samples of wood for that entire period, and for 720 AD, there are four. According to the theorist, one would need 50 samples at least to be able to date something correctly. As for Herbert's phantom time hypothesis, historians are not so convinced that such a large portion of history had been faked, and there's little evidence to suggest that it was. Yet there are still many who are quite certain that our history has been subject to falsifications and forgeries. Number 2. Recently, a 120-year-old photograph circulated across various social media platforms that sparked a strange conspiracy theory. Greta Thunberg, the climate activist, is a time traveler. Social media theorists maintain that Greta may have been a time traveler who's come back from the past to save us. The image had initially been posted on Twitter by Cool History, revealing that the picture was dating back to 1898 and was found in the archives of the University of Washington. The image in question reveals three individuals from the Yukon Territory in Canada, and one of them bears a striking resemblance to Greta. The girl also appears to have the same braided hairstyle as that that the Swedish activist is known for. While the timeline does not quite add up, many theorists are saying that this is proof that she's from a different time. After the resurfacing of the photograph, those in favor of the conspiracy have shared their logic that Greta time traveled to 2019 to warn everyone of the environmental decay that's to come. Some have even come to theorize alternatives, including that she's an immortal or a reincarnation. While these conspiracies ran wild, others came to a more logical conclusion. The image was photoshopped. But this was denied by the University of Washington, who stated that the image was most definitely not manipulated. The photo in question is an original. The library records do not list a name for the girl, and the caption simply reads, Youths Operating Gold Mines in Dominion Klondike. No other details are known about these individuals, and it's possible that they were lost along the way. An author, Jack Strange, had posed the theory in a tweet that quickly gained 50,000 likes. He later elaborated his claim in a blog post and pointed out that Greta's popularity had seemed to come from nowhere. He stated that it was as though the climate activist had flown into our space-time continuum. Some had rejected the conspiracy theory by saying, how can she be in the past if she's from the future? And the obvious answer was because she's a time traveler and can travel to any time period. The university who found this image in the archives is doubtful that this is proof of time travel. This photograph seemed to have struck a chord with the conspiracy theorists of the internet, though. They're convinced that Greta has gone back in time and returned to present day to try and save the planet. As Dean Friedman jokes, quote, 120-year-old photo sparks theories that climate activist and environmental heroine Greta Thunberg is in fact a time traveler who's traveled through time to save our planet. He ended his statement by saying that we could all use all the help that we can get. Aside from the striking resemblance, Eric Haig, who'd taken the photograph, was born in the same country as Greta, which tied into the conspiracy theory. Historians and activists deny that this is Greta, even though the two look very similar. But the theorists maintain their position on the notion that the activist has been on a space journey and is here to aid us all in the reversal of climate change. Number 1. Like most presidents, Joe Biden has been thrown into some wild conspiracy theories. Usually, these relate to the elite or reptilian people. But this time, it appears that theorists believe that Biden is a robot or some form of artificial intelligence. And he certainly does display some strange behavior during speeches or events. The theory rose to popularity last year on TikTok, after a video of the president circulated. He was in the middle of a speech and the camera zoomed in on his face. The video was 17 seconds long and not once did Biden blink. This led many people to believe he's a robot. In this video, one commenter had stated that the president was a high-end AI robot and another said that he's a robot and that it's clear in all the videos of him. While this video was taken after he just recovered from being sick, some maintained that he harbored some non-human qualities. Mostly, they were drawn to the fact that he didn't blink for 17 seconds but there were also points made to his general appearance and his actions. 
Twitter users claimed that the White House was using a body double, but others guessed at CGI and green screens. Biden's State of the Union speech is responsible for these outlandish conspiracies. According to some, the president had appeared to be more assertive than usual, which prompted some wild theories of its own. Biden had a few goals that he wanted to discuss, which he managed to get through, but the intense speech did not resemble previous State of the Union speeches. This unfamiliar style and presentation, paired with the less stumbling of words, had led many to believe that someone else was sent to deliver the speech on his behalf. Conspiracy theorist social media users believed that the replacement had to be a robot. One user wrote, Biden is just off. His tone, his speed of delivery, his loud, punchy way of speaking is really weird. This speech is odd. While another said that he was actually a dysfunctioning robot, and a third pointed out the fact that he didn't have any water during the whole speech, and that it appeared to not be the real Biden. Some had also highlighted Biden's actions during the event, and stated that his movements didn't align with his words. One person expressed that his image advisors had told him to shout to show mental competence, but his body seemed to be in slow motion. Gregory Hartley, who's a body language expert, alleged that the address appeared over-rehearsed and that it seemed as though it didn't show real feelings. A journalist who does reports on online disinformation as well as conspiracies has shared his theory on Twitter, and these include CGI, deepfake, green screen, body double, holograms, and cloning as conspiracy theories about the president based on a video. Another Twitter user had posted two images of Biden side by side. Both were taken from two different videos that were taken within hours of one another. They questioned why he looked and sounded completely different in both of the videos. Five Times August had posted these two videos which go back and forth showing the clear differences between them. In one video, the unblinking man's eyes seem bigger, whereas in the second, they're smaller, and his mouth also appears to be different. In the first video, the president looks pale and sickly, and as previously mentioned, he'd been sick in the previous few days. While many non-conspiracy theorists have come to Biden's defense, many maintain that he does not appear to be a real person. Some suggest that a robot or a clone was used just this one time, while others believe that the actual Biden is just a robot based on his strange movements and mannerisms. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked this video, be sure to hit that like button. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell to keep up to date with all of our future uploads. But my name is Ty Knotts, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.